Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I don't think I've ever done this before. I'm actually working on orchids in the kitchen in the morning. And that's because I've changed my day round and I need to water my mounts, the existing mounts, this afternoon. Um, but this is going to be a mounting session of the um, some of the orchids out of the big box from Beatrix. I've just brought a selection of mounts up from the shed. Um, so you could say it's a shed load, literally. Um, now these could easily have things living in them, amongst them. They haven't got anything living on them because I've checked. And certainly no eight-legged friends. Oh, you'll be interested in this possibly, if, well certainly if you're in the UK or other parts of Europe. We have an invasion in the UK of a new type of spider that um, certainly a while ago was unheard of in the UK, probably because of the cold winters, which we don't get so much of now. Um, it's a false widow spider, and we had the first one in the house that I've ever seen here, in my place. I've got, I have a friend, and they've invaded their conservatory and areas around there, and they've got loads of the things, and they're not nice. And quite honestly, it was a bit of a shock, because it was on the back of the chair about six inches from my daughter's head. Um, now it was just sitting there but it caught her eye and she didn't do a normal panic and vacate the county but she certainly vacated the chair, the chair and she said that's really weird dad that looks like a tropical orchid that looks like it could be poisonous you know it worried her a lot. Well it became two-dimensional very quickly <coughs> the bottom of my shoe but it's the first one I've had in the house anyway, that I've seen, let's put it that way. But um, they're not a nice looking uh, spider. They do look like trouble, if you know what I mean. I mean, all spiders can bite. Whether they can actually do you any harm is a different matter. But um, it's called a false widow because it looks exactly like the dreaded black widow spider, which is highly ven venomous. Um, this one just looks very much like it. And... Um, yeah, can do without those, certainly in the house. I don't mind spiders in the shed and in the garden. I'm sure they do the world a good. And there's an odd couple lurking in the grow room up in the corners that can stay. They don't do any harm. Just don't get on me, basically. <laughs> Otherwise you die. Um, anyway, an assortment of mounts that will all have to be a bit of a clean up on some of them. They've got old roots on where they were used once. And a sterilisation, which is boiling water poured all over them leave them to soak, <clears throat> then do it again, make sure there's nothing living or harbouring in the cracks and crevices, and um, then I'll get some plants out. Paraphernalia, I've got my fishing line, which I like to use. Luckily, most of these mounts have already got hooks on, but I um, don't quite know what I had in mind with that one, I'm sure. <laughs> I wouldn't normally put a hook on and do something mounted that way. I tend to like them that way. So I might move that one, or it might not get used. Anyway, I don't know how many plants I'm going to do. I've got my moss in to soak. I've got my little sprayer with the hydrogen peroxide 3%. That's to give the plants a good clean up before they get mounted. Make sure there's nothing lurking on those. I've got my scissors soaking in the rubbing alcohol. Um, isopropyl. I always have trouble saying that word. 70%. And dipping the scissors in there isn't the killing process, it's taking them out and allowing the, the evaporation to take place. I need to remember to do that between plants and my fishing line for tying on. So let's get some plants out, get this lot in the sink, get them sterilised and um, we'll make a start. Okay, these are the ones I'm going to mount. i um, just gone back to my notes. Uh, this strange long thing here is only just hanging in its pot. Um, it is actually two separate plants. One of them's got this sort of fat looking cane on it. This one is flattened in the middle and has kikis. Um, cold damage on this one, but the kikis have grown a bit since I got it. So I think it will be okay. But obviously what I need is some growth from the base, but those two pieces will get mounted. That's going to be trouble, that plant. Having looked up where it comes from, it grows on limestone outcrops, so that is not going to put up with any form of acidity whatsoever. And um, it would need a little bit higher on the um, pH scale than most other things because of where it grows. So you're going to be a nuisance, I can tell. 
Um, there's a few cattleyas here. Uh, that one has got some reasonable roots on it and some dead ones, but um, it's a seedling, so it needs to grow on. Um, I'll put the names on the pop-ups because uh, it'll be easier. It's another little cattleya, again seedling. It's got a new growth on it. One singular. Um, another cattleya here. Um, I thought it was going to lose this new growth with the cold, but it does seem to have moved a bit since I got it. It's got virtually no roots in there, I know that. It fell out of the pot when it came out of the box. So that's little lemon drops crossed with an encyclia. So that's unusual, or slightly different. And then this one, Dendrobium pteragonum variety giganteum. Excuse me, I went down the wrong way. Um, now this is in fact a Latoria type by definition, but obviously when I researched these not long after I'd got them, when I put this one in my notes, for some reason in the notes, in red, it says needs to be mounted, but I can't remember why. I wouldn't normally mount a Latoria type. Um, but uh, obviously at some point I decided that's what it needed doing so that's what's going to get done. So uh, I'll get these out of the pots and um, clear up the mess and uh, then we'll see how we go. There's five to do so um, I've got more than enough mounts and I certainly don't need any of the larger mounts. These can all go on quite small mounts. Just to get them going and get some roots growing. Um, I've still not decided whether I'm keeping all of them yet, but I'm certainly not passing on plants like this. I'd like to see active growth, new roots and things like that, so that I can say, you know, this plant's coming on nicely now, but it isn't yet. <laughs> Hopefully soon. So I'll be back when I've got them out there pots, and I must take the greatest of care not to get the tags muddled up. Because the tags are stuck on the pots at the moment, so... I'll get the plants out, tear the tags off, and then sort of try and keep them together. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, let's make a start. Um, I'll be doing these one at a time with a break in between, so I've got something else on the go. Um, and they'll be relatively quick. Right, this one is Dendrobium chrysocrepis. And as I say, it's going to be an awkward one. It grows on limestone outcrop, so it's effectively a lithophyte, not an epiphyte, for a start. Um, where it comes from, it grows cool. So, yet another problem. <coughs> but the only good thing about it at the moment is it's a non-resting type, simply because where it comes from and the fact that it grows on the ground, although the rains might be reduced dramatically in the winter, it would still be getting moisture because it's on the ground. It's going to get morning dew, so it's not a resting type. Um, not that I mind those, but um, this is two separate plants, but the roots are a little tangled, so I don't want to untangle them, basically. <laughs> I just want to keep it as it is and disturb it as little as possible. I'm only going to put a tiny little bit of moss on this, because of its love of, uh, well, it's more of its dislike of acidic environments. The only moss I'm going to add to this is purely to keep the base of the plant hydrated to see if I can trigger some new growths. Try not to drip the moss water in my coffee. So it's only going to get a tiny little bit. It's not going to get much. I just want the base of the plant to stay hydrated. Now looking at the plant I've got, I can only go by the example I've got. This is a kiki machine. Now that might be because the canes lie flat on the ground and it grows new plantlets, a bit like Lodigesii. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about it and it's difficult to find out too much about this one. It's a rather obscure one. Um, but nonetheless, it has kikis that I thought were all badly cold damaged, but they're not. They are showing signs of moving on now. Certainly two of them have opened a leaf since I got it. Um, <clears throat> the plan will be <clears throat> that as these kikis progress and get full-size leaves with roots, I will take them off and bring them back to the mount. 
and start new plants so that I've actually got several plants growing on the base from the base of the uh, plant so it'll look like a more bushier plant effectively. That's my theory anyway. Now I'm going to get told off, aren't I? Because I forgot to tie my tie onto the mount before I put the plant on it. Well, unfortunately, I've been doing it like that for so many years, I can't break the habit. It's not the end of the world with this one, because it's <laughs> I can just lift one end up and put a loop round. But I would recommend, if you're going to tie a plant onto a mount, if you tie your tie onto the mount first, then put the plant on it, you save yourself a lot of hassle with the moss falling off and um, <laughs> the, the tie knocking the plant off and having to start again, etc. It does make life easier, but certainly in this case, it's going as it is. Mainly because uh, I can just do that this time round and hold the plant and put my loop round and pull it reasonably tight. <coughs> so in this case, it's not the end of the world. Um, just go around a few times, one quite close to the base, you know, cutting its uh, circulation off. Plus I've got a lot of roots that I don't know whether these roots are going to branch or not. I really don't know. So they'll get given the opportunity. I've managed to hook up my little uh, loose end easily solved. Now I've got wet hands, but I don't want to let go and dry them in case everything comes undone. So uh, just loop that through there and get a knot on the go. That's everything secure then. And I'm going to do a new label for each one of these plants. And I'll tell you why. First of all, I don't like those labels. And personally, I don't like what it says on the back. I've seen too many unboxing videos from that place with NAF plants coming out. I've also seen some good ones, don't get me wrong. But the fact that bad plants are being sent out at all would worry me. <clears throat> I literally watched an unboxing video this morning. Um, I can't forget what's the channel some strange name, Amber and Orchid BB, I think it was. And basically, out of that box came a hibiki that has long since ceased to be. And I don't believe it got like that in the box. Now, the other plant that was in there didn't look too clever either. But, uh, yeah, that place worries me. So I won't be ordering from there, that's for sure. But then I'm not ordering and buying much this year anyway, so uh, it doesn't really affect me, does it? <clears throat> My list of new plants this year is going to be very small. And the list of plants I've got is going to get smaller as well. <laughs> but I thought if I put a new label on there, um, on each one of these, then uh, I'll be happier. Whether I can get this thing to grow and thrive, I really don't know. It is going to be an awkward one. But we try. Okay, that's that one done. I, can't, I won't be able to show you that because it's a long dangly thing. But it's nicely secured. Um, hopefully some new growth from the base. And then as some of these kikis take off and get some decent root systems, if they do, they can come off and be strapped on at the base too to get more growth from the base because it's quite a long cane it's very very desiccated very desiccated but we'll see what we can do that's one done okay this is the little catlia little lemon drops crossed with insiculia vitalina or vitalina however you want to say it now having taken the dead roots off as you can see there are next to no roots left yeah and even I'm, I'm just leaving some of these to enable it to get a hold. That one could branch, but that was the only viable root. But what we do have is a new growth with roots just starting. Perfect. Unfortunately, the plant's back to front. Because I would like the new growth to be at the front of the plant. But look at the leaves. Yeah, If I mount it like that, all the leaves 
facing away from the light. And it won't photosynthesize anywhere near as well as if it's mounted that way with the majority of the leaves facing the light. Unfortunately, that leaves the new growth at the back. The only good thing about that is the roots will get straight onto the mount. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's just some plants are grown in such a way that they face a light source. And if they don't get turned or moved around or get light from many sources, they do end up with all the leaves facing the light, as this one has done. So, uh, yeah, it'll have to go that way round, whether I like it or not. Um, obviously, without roots, the main source of food for this plant, temporarily, is from the leaves, not from the roots. So we've got to give them every chance we can and enable that photosynthesis to work. Right, dry hands, play my fishing line. And yes, I will remember to tie it on first. <laughs> I may have to go round the back of a pseudo bulb on this one um, just to steady it in an upright position. Um, so I'm needing to make sure I've got plenty. Nothing worse than running out halfway round. And we'll remember to tie it on first this time. Oops. Butterfingers. See, normally it's getting late in the day when I'm doing this sort of thing, so I've got the excuse that I'm tired. <laughs> I'll have to make up a new excuse for today, won't I? There we go. Right. Now, whereabouts do I want the plant? I don't know how big these leaves are going to grow, really. It might not grow much bigger than this, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I need the plant about there. I'm going to have to tie one pseudo bulb at the back just to hold it upright, otherwise, it'll flop. So, we need to go round about there. It always pays when you're mounting to address the mount. Actually take your plant and put it where you think it ought to go on the mount. And get that in your mind before you start. And then, uh, then you don't have to do your thinking on the fly. I don't want a huge amount of moss for this one. I mean, the whole idea of growing my... Uh, Catlias in the holy clay pots is that they do like that wet dry cycle and having a load of moss that will slow that process up but this is a young plant which at the moment has got next to no roots so some moss to get those roots hydrated and get them going is good for now I normally put the moss on last don't I but if I don't do it this way round this time, that new growth won't have any moss round it because it's going to be round the back of the plant. So uh, I'll go against the grain this time, I think. I need those new roots in something to get them hydrated and get them moving. Because if that doesn't happen, the new growth could fail. And that's this plant's hope at the moment, is that new growth. So... Um, I'm going to tuck that inside that little tiny seedling bulb. So that's near the base. That's one. I'll put one round those few little roots that we've got. And then avoiding the new growth, round the back. You see what I mean about it flopping forward? It's already starting to do it. And take one round that large pseudo bulb to hold the plant upright. I think I might have to go around something else as well. Wobbly plants, especially when you've got delicate new roots pushing up, is really not a good idea. Because every time you handle your mount, you wobble the plant. And if you're wobbling the plant and those new root tips are anywhere near the mount itself, the tips can break. And then you've just lost your dream of loads of nice new roots pushing out. So that will do. When new roots are at that stage, they are incredibly fragile. Um, quite honestly, the best time is when the roots are about an inch long. That way at least you can see them and not forget they're there. But when they're tiny like this, um, they are incredibly fragile. So at the moment they're just sitting on some moss. There's me tag.
Ugh. Holes bunged up. That's a better. Rose will be proud of me using up all the tags she sent me. I've still got quite a lot of plants in the grow room with no tags. I know what they are. It's Every time I water, I always seem to be in a hurry and um, to take the time out to write tags just never <laughs> seems to happen. I'm gradually getting round to them though, slowly but surely. So there we go. As I say, the leaves are now facing the light, so they will photosynthesize. The plant's secure. The new growth's at the back with those new... Oh, I've just actually noticed there's some more new roots here. Just there. I don't know whether they're picking up on the camera. So this growth here has a couple of new roots at the base along with the new roots on the new growth. So I would say that would recover reasonably well. So that's another one done. Okay, on to the next one. Um, this one's got so much writing on the tag I've decided to reuse the tag because I can't be bothered to write all that out. It's in my notes, I know what it is. Um, this is another trick they like to play. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but you know, when you see that, you will get plant like in pictures. You think you've got a plant when in fact you've got two. Now, often when they come out of the flask, they're so entangled that you damage them taking them apart, so maybe there's an excuse. I've seen that too many times from this lot. When they get bigger, if they end up keeping them long enough, they do say with the larger plants, two plants in one pot, so later in life they, they do own up to that. But, um, you know, you take your chance with seedlings, um, they might only cost a few pounds, but then you're looking at three plus years, maybe even four years, before you get a pseudobol big enough to actually produce blooms. So there's a lot of time and work, but some people love watching things grow from seedling size to maturity. Personally, I prefer to buy the mature plant, preferably in bloom, so that I can actually see them. I see their size, their true colours, you know, and I mean this lot are renowned for even putting the wrong pictures up. Anyway, that's what I've got. Most of the roots were dead. This little piece has one viable root, and it may branch from some of those stumps. Um, this little piece I don't hold out a lot of hope for but if it can push a new growth out it might be okay even that root's not that good I cut them back till I found relatively healthy tissue so it's possible they could branch wouldn't hold out a lot of hope though personally right let's get this going Oh, come on, don't mess me about. <clears throat> ah. Cat hair on my nose. Oh! <laughs> That's it, if you've got cats, then you, you, you get fluff. <laughs> get it on your carpets, get it on your chairs. Get it on your nose. I hate hair on my face. Ugh. Tries to be on the wall. Uh. Anyway, I need to get cracking a bit. I've um, got to make myself look pretty for the Orchid Society meeting tonight. That's another goal that I can never achieve. But I aim at it. <laughs> at my age, do you really think I'm bothered what I look like? Take me as I am or leave it. Two choices. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of moss behind these two. Not a lot. Most of it I want around the front of the plant. But if I don't keep the base of these two little pieces hydrated, then they don't stand much hope, quite honestly. The best thing you can do with seedlings, as they come out of the flask, they're very, very prone to rots and all sorts of problems, fungal diseases, because they've got no real immune system yet, because they haven't been exposed to proper air and things. And basically, for their first year or so, um, they need to go in something that they're going to stay in and not get moved around. They're too delicate. They haven't got the strength in them yet. 
So, uh, you know, ideally they, they get put in a place where they don't need to get moved for some time until they become well established with a nice strong root system for the size of the plant, at which point they can be potted on. And if they're put in a quality mix at that point, <laughs> I've just done it again, haven't I? I just cannot break this habit. <laughs> Uh, the trouble is I have been doing this for donkey's years, I am quite used to it and um, I don't normally knock the plants off, or the moss. <laughs> so, like I say, it is better if you... Uh, I'm going to have to go across those roots to hold them firm and have a chance of the plant being stable. I'm even going to go in between two pseudo bulbs. This needs to stay firm. It's the only way it stands a chance, really. And we got far too much. We'll chop that out for a start. Nothing worse than trying to tie knots on with <laughs> a two-foot-long bit of fishing line hanging out. Mm -hmm. It's better to just chop it and get yourself some manageable pieces to do your tie. that rubbishy tag. Oh, come on. Get in there. You miss me about. Maybe under the hedge, mate. Another one done. So I don't personally believe in the seedling route to get in an orchid collection. I'd prefer to blow, grow mature plants. But it's sat on there. It's reasonably firm. The few roots it's got should stay hydrated now. And we'll see what happens. That's all we can do. So that's another one done. Right. <clears throat> Last one of the Catlia seedlings. I am pretty confident this is two plants as well, but the roots are a bit entangled and the few roots it's got I do not want to jeopardise. I'm not even going to try and take the bark off because these roots are still okay. So it has better roots than the last pair, but I'm pretty sure that is... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is two plants. <laughs> I obviously trimmed one root that was joining the two together. So it is two plants. Um, this is a new growth here, so that's good. That piece has a new growth with a viable root. No, it's not viable actually, that's paper thin. Hopefully it will grow some more. So it's got one good root for supporting five or six leaves. Not ideal, but this little piece do you know that's more than one plant as well? I'm not going to keep that piece. Really should try and separate them out when they come out the flask. If you're going to disturb them, do it once and get them in their pots. Uh, that root's gone as well. It looked okay, but with a base like that, it's not. I know I'm not using my proper scissors, but these are clean. Right, what's left? Paper thin, despite being white. And I can see that these are not good roots. That's got one good root, but it has got a new growth. And the other roots I'm just going to use to anchor it. So, yet again, two pieces, naughty but nice, as they say. quite so much this time, it's an even smaller amount. <laughs> Just remember to tie it on first. Right, these plants are gonna go about halfway up. 
there. All I can do with these little seedlings is get them on a mount where they can stay for some considerable time. And if they really take off and outgrow their mount, the trick you can do with a small mount is just mount the mount on a bigger mount. And the roots will grow off the smaller one onto the bigger one. If you think you need to do that. Right, a bit of moss, not a lot. growth pointing that way so we'll have that pointing towards the side a bit perhaps and this one has a new growth we'll point that the other way and put the base the two bases very close together <laughs> maybe they'll become conjoined later in life and could be treated as one plant yes I am mucking about You've got to go careful with this sort of thing if ever you do get involved with society judging or show judging. The last thing they like, and they'll jump on it, is if you try and con them into believing you have a nice big strong plant when in fact it's two. They really don't like that. They'll have a go. Well, the Myarengus got uh, thrown out for that very reason. There's two plants on a mount, both were in bloom, it looked stunning and as I walked in, the person in charge of the uh, little group of people that would be judging it said uh, we won't be able to judge that, that's two plants, no mucking, straight in there. <laughs> so it's just something you need to be aware of if you, uh, if you go down that road, I know not all of you do. And some people's plants live in their home and never leave it. And that doesn't mean to say they're not enjoyable. I mean, I like the company of the orchid societies and going out and about with the shows and helping with the setup and, the, you know, the various activities. I actually enjoy that, but um, I know not everybody is even close enough to be able to get to an orchid society have the inkling to do that sort of travelling. I mean, one of my orchid societies is uh, it's 40 miles away, which is not a big distance. And the only reason I took it on is um, there's a lot of joint members between the two societies, some of which are quite good friends. And in addition to that, the road to do that 40 miles on is either motorway or dual carriageway, apart from a couple of miles at either end. So I can do that journey in, um, well, I won't say how quick, <laughs> a, bit of a, give a, a bit of a giveaway. But let's say I've done it in just over half an hour, which in this country is not bad going. In fact, I think it, I did it in a bit less than half an hour once. But you can't get going on most of our roads, you just can't, well, without being dangerous anyway. There we go then, that's that little one done. One more. Okay, the last one for this session is this um, little dendrobium, which is one plant. <laughs> dendrobium tetragonum variety gigantium, so it says here. And I had to go and look this up because it was driving me up the wall as to why I thought I needed to mount this and why I thought it was a... A Latoria type. Well, it isn't. It comes from uh, Australia, New South Wales, and Northern Queensland. So it's an Aussie one. Um, it's one of those dendrobiums that likes less water in the winter. Well, practically all my orchids get less water in the winter, so that's not a problem. But it's not a resting type as such. So it would be classed as a semi continuous grower, I suppose. I think that's not a bug. No. Um, yeah, and it needs to be mounted be, because of its pendulous nature, so it says. Well, I haven't had no experience of it. So if I plant it upright and it's got a pendulous nature, the new growths are going to arch downwards, but these growths won't. So I'm quite happy for it to do that rather than plant it upside down. And as it grows larger growths, they can become pendulous with a nice looking plant sat at the top until those canes eventually become deciduous. So I'm going to actually mount it near the top of the mount and um, then it can go pendulous if it chooses to do so. I must admit it doesn't look like it's going to do that, but that's what it says. Um, 
The other thing with this one is you'd have to go and look it up because I don't like posting pictures of um, plants, blooms that don't belong to me. Um, but the blooms on this are very unusual. Almost bulbophyllum like. Oops, nearly forgot to do the tie first. Ugh. Do you know, it'll probably be about 10 years before I break that habit completely. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a strange one, the blooms. Um, almost bulbophyllum like to a degree. Um, very strange, quite attractive. And um, it's another one of those where it's recommended you don't cut the spikes because they may shoot out again. And it can also produce spikes from lower down canes as well as at the apex. So uh, it's one of those where just leave the spikes alone. If the blooms drop, just leave them there. You never know. So that's worth knowing. There aren't many dendrobiums grow like that that I know of. So it's an unusual trait. Very unusual actually, I was just sort of racking through my mind and um, you know there are dendrobiums that can shoot out many times from the same cane but that's not the same as blooms dropping and then the cane effectively branching out, that is unusual for dendrobiums. So uh, if I ever get it to bloom we'll have to remember not to cut the spikes. Now, a lot of these roots aren't viable, but there's, it's such a fine root system. If I get poking around trying to sort out the good ones from the bad ones, some of the good ones would be lost, which I'm not prepared to do. Yeah, it's got it. So I'm just going to uh, leave the roots there, basically, and let it sort itself out. But yes, it's, uh, it does recommend mounting it due to its pendulous nature. So that's what we'll do. Tag. The only reason I tuck my tags in like that is to stop them flapping around. <laughs> you know, as you pick the mount up and everything, they flop around and spin around and all sorts of things. But if you tuck them in, to a, in between a couple of the ties before you. Uh, tie them on, they tend to stay where they're put, which is good. I think this one will grow. I don't have uh, any real doubts about this one taking off. It's got a couple of uh, minute new growths in amongst there. Where did I see one? There's one here. So there are there's signs of activity and uh, hopefully any subsequent new growths will start a new root system in the not too distant future. So that's the end of that lot then. That's um, <clears throat> I think virtually most, well most of the ones from the big box are now sorted that needed sorting quite quickly. There's a few others that look like they've been recently repotted that are okay for now so I don't need to worry about them but these were the ones that I wanted to uh, deal with first. So I think most of those are done now. Got one more that I've lost the ID for. But, uh, I'll do that in another session. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that lot. Thanks for watching and see you next time.